Philippines climbed 19 places to land at the 32nd spot, out of 145 countries, in the 2023 edition of Global Firepower's Military Strength Ranking. Considered a middle power, with gains in military capability, the Philippines ranks 16th in Asia and 5th among the ASEAN 6. The Philippines' strongest measure is defense networks, outpacing its regional peers, where it places ninth, reflecting the extent of its bilateral military cooperation with treaty allies with the United States. The score for defense networks is measured by a country's regional alliances, global defense partnerships, and regional defense diplomacy. Meanwhile, its military capacity also improved by two places, ranking to 17th place. As the country inched up its future resources score or the measurement for its projected distribution of future economic, military, and demographic resources. The Philippines also exerts more influence in the region than expected given its available resources, as indicated by the country's positive power gap score. When it comes to the arms trade, the institute reported that South Korea is the Philippines' most significant arms trade partner with deals worth around $692 million. The U.S. comes in second with $384 million, followed by Indonesia with $180 million, Australia with $16 million, and trading numbers with Japan with a total of $6 million. The Asia Power Index also reported the Philippines posted gains in diplomatic influence, which refers to a country's diplomatic network, multilateral power, and its foreign policy thrust. In addition, the countries hold high-level bilateral and plurilateral defense diplomacy meetings, include the US, Australia, Japan, Malaysia, and Indonesia. The increase in the Philippines' overall military strength is due to its modernization efforts. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is currently undertaking a modernization program, with countries such as France, Israel, and India, offering to give new technology to the country. Its ongoing modernization efforts are allowing the Armed Forces of the Philippines, in fulfilling its mandate of protecting the nation, and the people, including safeguarding the country's sovereignty. The Republic Act 10349, also known as the Revised Armed Forces Modernization Act, is the Armed Forces of the Philippines' 15-year modernization program that started in 2012 and will continue through 2027. It was designed to protect defense modernization efforts from shifts in the country's political climate. The third milestone or horizon period from 2023 to 2027 has a projected budget of US$4 billion. There are opportunities for the sale of aircraft, ships, unmanned vehicles, intelligence and surveillance systems, communications, personal protective equipment, and weapon systems. From December 2021 to June 2022, or in the last seven months of former President Rodrigo Duterte's administration, the Department of National Defense signed 109 billion pesos worth of acquisition contracts for the armed forces of the Philippines' modernization programs including 28 billion pesos for two anti-ship, anti-submarine, and anti-aircraft corvettes from South Korea's Hyundai Heavy Industries Company Limited. 18.9 billion pesos for three shore-based supersonic ramjet missile batteries from India's Brahmos Aerospace. 32 billion pesos for 32 Black Hawk choppers from Poland's PZL Milets, and 30 billion for six long-range offshore patrol vessels, also from South Korea's Hyundai Heavy Industries Company Limited. Last month, the Philippine Navy acquired its first ground-based air defense system, consisting of Israeli-made Spider missile batteries. Its objective is to neutralize any potential aerial threat or foreign aircraft intrusion in the country's airspace. However, this system is categorized as a secondary air defense cover after the PAF's FA-50PH light jet fighters, earlier acquired from South Korea. This acquisition costing 6.8 billion pesos is not mentioned in the USSD report. 
U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's visit last week, to pave the way for the U.S. to reaffirm its support for its oldest treaty ally in Southeast Asia, such as promising assistance for the AFP's modernization and expediting the implementation of their Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement by adding four more sites. This means U.S. troops will soon have access to nine Philippine military facilities. The two countries also agreed to restart joint patrols in the West Philippine Sea. The Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA, supplements the Visiting Forces Agreement BFA, under the Mutual Defense Treaty, intended to bolster the alliance of the Philippines and the United States of America. It's the most significant defense agreement between the U.S. and the Philippines in decades. Because the U.S. is constitutionally barred from establishing permanent military bases in the Philippines. The EDCA allows the U.S. to rotate its troops in the Philippines and allows build-operate facilities on Philippine bases for both their military forces, while the Philippines will have personnel access to American ships and planes. In January 2019, the first major project under the EDCA was completed at Clark Air Base in Pampanga. There are ongoing EDCA projects at four other locations in Nueva Ecija, Cagayan de Oro, Puerto Princesa, and the Mactan Air Base in Cebu. Last week, four additional locations in northern Luzon and Palawan were designated under the EDCA, but the exact locations remain confidential pending further consultations. Extensive access to key locations facing the West Philippine Sea, Luzon Strait, and possibly, the Pacific Ocean, underscores America's goal to develop integrated deterrence. The Philippines occupies strategic real estate, vital to U.S. national interests and that of many nations. It's also vital to China, which is aiming to be the center of the universe. It's vital to the economic interests of countries that rely on safe passage through sea lines of communication. Furthermore, it's vital for countries in the Indo-Pacific region to dissuade China from pursuing its hegemonic plans. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s decision to fully implement and expand the scope of the EDCA is a sharp departure from former President Rodrigo Duterte's swing in favor of China, before belatedly returning as a U.S. ally. Although Mr. Duterte's independent foreign policy, of being a friend to all, has been upheld by Mr. Marcos. His all-out support for the Philippines' U.S. defense alliance, serves as leverage against an increasingly warlike China. As such, Balakatan exercises have dramatically increased the number of joint activities and participating troops. Last November, the Philippines and France signed a memorandum of agreement to strengthen the country's maritime safety and security, particularly in shipbuilding and ship repair. France will deploy a maritime expert to provide the necessary technical assistance, training, and consultancy service on best practices to ensure accurate navigation procedures, create a national transport plan and help implement the 10-year maritime industry development plan to modernize the local fleet. Last week, Mr. Marcos and Japan Prime Minister Fumio Kishida agreed to sharply boost defense ties allowing Japanese troops for greater access to Philippine territory on account of rising volatility in the East and South China Seas. It allows Japan to deploy its forces for humanitarian missions and disaster response in the Philippines, conduct more joint exercises, reciprocal port calls and aircraft visits, transfer of Japanese defense equipment and technology, and strengthen trilateral cooperation with the U.S. The Philippines and Australia also inked a Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperative Defense Activities in 1995. Australia is one of the Philippines' only two BFA partners. Both countries enjoy a significant degree of security cooperation, including the presence of Australian mobile training teams for capacity building on counter-terrorism, urban warfare, maritime security, and other fronts. The defense pacts with these countries are crucial for regional stability, and human and ecological security. Yet, there's no integrated and systematic action that is so essential in deterring China. Each nation must focus and close ranks to protect their common national interests.
If the region has been paying attention, war is just around the corner. The Lowy Institute named the U.S. as the Philippines' top joint training exercise partner with 47 joint exercises, followed by Indonesia with 26, Malaysia with 24, Brunei with 22, and Thailand with 21. The Philippines' overall military strength, which ranks fifth among ASEAN six, is just above Malaysia which ranks 42nd globally. Indonesia has the strongest military power which ranks 13th, followed by Vietnam at 19th place, Thailand ranks 24th and Singapore at 29th place. While in the global air powers ranking, the Philippines Air Force ranks 4th among the ASEAN 6, which ranks 58th globally. Indonesia has the best military air asset in the region, ranking 29th globally, followed by Singapore at 35th, Thailand ranking 51st, Malaysia at 61st, and Vietnam which ranks 66th.